please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, good afternoon. You're watching Midcap Radar. I'm Sumera Abdi. Uh, Prashant will join in in a bit. Well, for the market, uh, we saw a dip actually uh, when we heard the four Supreme Court judges addressing the media. But since then, the market uh, has recovered. So we're still mildly lower in the red. But uh, nevertheless, we're off of the low point right now. So the frontline indices is just down uh, a few odd points. The Sensex down 30 odd points. But the mid cap index remains um, a, a spot of bother because at one point the index was down about a percent. Now it's cut its losses to uh, some extent, so just down about a half odd percent. But nevertheless, underperforming uh, its frontline peers. Uh, well, the case progresses further. We now understand that the Chief Justice of India uh, will also be putting his side uh, of uh, 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 the matter forward to the media. I think he is due to address the media at 2 this afternoon. So we'll wait by and see how things uh, shape up on that front as well. Uh, quickly, let's also take stock of how the European markets have uh, opened up. I think the futures had suggested a fairly decent opening. Uh, so the uh, French market higher, although the FTSE now trending flat. Let's invite Ashwini Gujral now for some trading ideas. Hi, Ashwini. We've uh, recovered almost back to that flat line once again. Uh, your ideas on the index and your individual stock trades? See, the good thing about the weekend is that you can solve issues over the weekend and Monday can be a new day. So that way, you know, people should be buying this decline, whatever decline is left now. And I'm sure that we'll soon be into the green. You know, the best thing of making something a public issue is to address media. Now, one side addresses, then the other side addresses, then what? Supreme Court closes down, country closes down. Chances are things get sorted out and the market has to look ahead. So that way, I think uh, people should cover their shorts if they are short and get long, uh, at least on private banks and things which will keep running. Maybe avoid PSU banks or, you know, people who have cases, etc. But overall, I think uh, this is a dip you should have bought earlier and even now you can buy. Uh, as far as stocks are concerned, Indusin Bank is a buy with a stop of 1700, target of 1765. Sarah Sanitary is a buy with a stop of 3800 target of 39.20 and RIL is a buy with a stop of 9.40 target of 9.65. All right, uh, Ashman, thanks very much uh, for that. With that, let's actually uh, revisit the top story of the day, which is that four sitting Supreme Court judges addressed the media earlier this afternoon, and they've raised some concerns about administration within the Supreme Court. Indeed, a rare event in the history of the nation. Ashmit Kumar, a correspondent who attended that press meet, is standing by with the fine print. Uh, hi, Ashmit. Uh, take us through it once, please. So extremely high on symbolism as far as this press conference is concerned uh, and certainly unprecedented. We've never before seen uh, four senior judges of the Apex Court come together and then voice their concern about the functioning of the judiciary itself. We uh, judges more often than not voice their concerns through internal mechanisms, but that is essentially what uh, these four judges uh, have done. Uh, they said that they did try to raise these concerns. They tried to red flag various issues uh, before the Chief Justice of India, but there was just no action. Now also keep in mind that these four judges are all a part of the Collegium, the Supreme Court Collegium, the highest uh, body as far as the Supreme Court is concerned, consists of the five senior-most judges. This here, right here, was the entire strength of the Collegium minus the Chief Justice of India. The concerns that they've raised essentially are to do with assignment of cases, essentially are to do with how uh, the administrative matters, how the internal functioning of the Apex Court is done at the hands of the, uh, the Chief Justice of India. For now, uh, what appears to be have been the tipping point was the assignment of the Justice Loya case. Uh, there, were, there was an application, two petitions indeed that were filed uh, which raised questions about the death uh, or, uh, under quote-unquote mysterious circumstances of uh, Justice Loya and had sought a Supreme Court appointed probe. Now it is the assignment of that particular case that has raised concerns. In fact, uh, uh, though not, in, uh, not, not specifically mentioned, but the broad concern that the letter uh, seems to have expressed is that uh, the, pref the allotment of uh, these cases, the assignment of cases by the Chief Justice of India is an arbitrary exercise, uh, exercise is, 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 ba uh, is based on preferential 
differential treatment of judges and that appears to be the core concern here. Nonetheless, a big issue uh, being highlighted here that there is internal rift on being asked a very pointed question on whether this is a protest, whether this can be read as a construed as a perhaps a case of mutiny by the four judges. Well, to that, they pointed out very clearly that all they want to do is bring the nation abreast with what the functioning of the uh, of the highest court of the land is like, uh, but nothing more, nothing less, not saying anything uh, to the effect of whether or not this can be construed as a protest. All lies now, however, importantly, on the Chief Justice of India and how he chooses to respond to this internal crisis, credibility crisis, one may call it. Uh, what's also important is that the Chief Justice of India, very shortly, minutes away now, will be meeting the Attorney General of India to get an assessment of how this is, things stand as of today. Uh, but clearly, uh, an unprecedented move, the four senior judges coming out in what appears to be clearly a case of protest uh, as far as the functioning in the apex court is concerned. Back to you. Okay, Yashmet, thanks so much for filling us in on that one. By the way, we'll be tuning in at around 2 p.m. where, in fact, uh, the Chief Justice of India will be, uh, you know, uh, addressing. We'll get some sound, sound bites coming out of there as well. But by the way, as Ashwini told us a short while back, go ahead and buy this dip. The market is giving you that opportunity and we could move into the green. So we're in the green. Uh, as we speak, even the Nifty Bank has moved higher. But we have uh, Mr. Mohan Daspai uh, who joins us. Uh, thanks so much, sir, for uh, joining in. Well, uh, well, you know, you attempted to call it that. Is it uh, a bit of, you know, legal imbalance that's taking place uh, in the country? Would it be too harsh a word uh, to call it that? How are you reading the situation? See, I would say that is unprecedented and totally wrong. Absolutely. Because the justice of the Supreme Court should not go to the media to voice an internal matter. Mm -hmm. They could decide it themselves. They should write to the Chief Justice. And the Chief Justice should take the decision. But going to the media is totally wrong. In law, we have the concept of called judicial restraint. But they have to be restrained, not interact with the outside world, and be in their own world to ensure impartiality. Now, by going public and voicing the concern about such things, they have split the Supreme Court wide open. Please remember, during the emergency when Justice, uh, when the Chief Justice was uh, appointed over many judges, all the judges decided to resign rather than go public or tell the public what they feel. And there's a need for judicial reform. Even the collegium system is not sanctioned by the Constitution, not there in the Constitution as only debate. It came out of two or three judicial decisions, particularly one by Justice Verma, for some very particular reason. And now, nowhere in the world do the Supreme Court judges appoint themselves. They are subject to Parliament, which is sovereign, because Parliament reflects the will of the people. So we need wholesale reforms in judiciary. And we also have this sad spectacle of Prashant Bhushan, uh, Shanti Bhushan giving a letter to the former Chief Justice saying, please open the cover, and the cover contains the name of the judges who are charged with certain, certain acts of impropriety, but that cover has still not been opened, nor has the lawyer been punished for contempt in case he's made a mistake. So I think there's a need for reform, there's a need for Parliament to step in, Parliament to step in and put in much norms, the need for Supreme Court to exercise judicial restraint, and the need for Supreme Court to stop being very activist. Supreme Court has become more activist right now. I take your point, uh, Mr. Pai. So, uh, you know, while uh, a lot of people have said that, uh, you know, this is a matter that has been brewing now for many, many months and it has only come to a head now. But more importantly, what I want to ask you is that what's the message that's now being sent out uh, to, say, foreign investors? Because judicial stability, uh, I mean, for India has been sort of one of the cornerstones, right? Now, with that itself being challenged, how would outsiders view India? No, I think outsiders will just be curious because these things happen once in a while in all the major courts. We see it in the U.S. where there are partisan judges and they either are conservative or then others are democratic and there's a very different system. We see it in other countries too. So I don't think they'll get worried. Innovations will not get worried. But they'll be curious as to what is happening. But the bigger thing is how is the credibility of the Supreme Court before the eyes of the citizens of this country? I as a citizen will be very worried that the Supreme Court, instead of focusing on protecting the Constitution, they're fighting among themselves, and they're coming before the media and telling the media and citizens that, look, we're all in the wrong, we don't agree with the chief justice. And I think there's a matter of concern. There has to be judicial discipline. And if they don't like the chief justice, they should write to the chief justice and, well, they should quit. That's the way, that's an honorable way to do it. But going to the media, having a press conference is not the right thing. Then tomorrow, 
just imagine every every year some four judges will get together hold a media conference say oh the work given to us is not this not this we don't like it then what do you do how will the court function mm. this is not the way for the court But, to function this is not the way for any constitutional body to function mm. Uh, sir, also a lot of people have uh, uh, sort of made this inference uh, that there might be some sort of interference from the executive itself. Uh, wouldn't that be a bigger worry? I don't think I don't think anybody can make the claim that there's interference because all the chief justices in the last seven years have been appointed on the seniority basis. When you are a chief justice, you're appointed on a seniority basis. You don't owe it to anybody, right? nobody has picked you up you come by seniority all of them are formed by seniority and they will retire when the time comes to an end and they will nominate or suggest the next senior judge who will become the chief justice so i don't think there's any interference by any executive and i don't think it should become an ideological or a political fight now because the chief justice is independent he acts on his own and i don't think there is any, any interference there is no record of any interference because his appointment is not based upon the executive's will it's based upon seniority and i think that's very clear all right uh, thanks so much uh, mr pai for stopping by and in fact giving us uh, your comments on this case thanks so much uh, for uh, stopping by well the markets did move into the green unfortunately in fact we slipped a tad bit um, just a quick check i think uh, that's uh, you know that's the uh, you know sticking with this case we'll be waiting by at 2 pm in fact we have the chief justice of india that's uh, likely to speak out and at 4 pm we have kapil sibal he's going to be holding a press conference as well so we'll be sticking with this uh, story uh, all through the day and fact getting the latest with regard to what's going on there just before we slip into a short break i think we should pull up pnb gilts that stock suddenly spiked up i don't know whether there's any movement in terms of the bond yields but pnb gilts remember the stock was down at the start uh, of the sa i don't know whether there's some movement in the bond yields because that's normally the way uh, the stock functions let's pull up the bond yields at some point of time uh if there is some softening there then maybe in fact that could be the reasoning why we are seeing the stock spike up but um uh, nifty is holding more or less uh, flattish as we speak in fact we have recovered a goodish bit we're trading in the green so good news uh, uh the nifty bank as well after falling close around 100 points that as well is back in the green intraday charts so both of them should come up for you but we have another guest with us so mr richard ku the chief economist uh, numura research institute joins us now on the sidelines of the cfa society india's eighth india investment conference hi mr ku thanks so much sir for uh, joining in uh, today well first things first we've been getting a lot of positive data that's been coming in from the globe whether it's from the united states or from the eurozone particularly in the last 6 months on do you see a recovery on the ground do you believe that in fact global economy is ripe to take off Well, I don't know whether takeoff is the right word, but it's definitely happening in yes. both United States, Europe, and even Japan. Mm. And so, yes, we are heading toward a better times. Mm. Right, uh, Mr. Ku. Good afternoon, sir. Um, I wanted to just also check that um, you know, given the way the commodity cycle itself is panning out, uh, how might uh, 2018? Uh, how might we see commodities in 2018? I mean, uh, we've already seen oil actually dipping a tad uh, from uh, the, the 2014 highs. Uh, you think it might become a big worry, uh, especially for some of these emerging markets? Well, I think economies are <coughs> improving, and if economies are improving, naturally demand for commodities would increase. Uh, but at the same time, you know, inflation rates are still very low in most of the advanced countries. Mm. And when you look at what the private sector as a group is doing, mm. both in the United States and in Europe, or even Japan, private sector as a group is still not borrowing money. And if people are not borrowing money, money supply really cannot increase. Right. And if the money supply don't increase you're not going to get a large pick up in inflation and so to some extent yes inflation will be higher than where we are now but until private sector really changes its behavior and start borrowing money i don't think we we can see a huge pick up in inflation or sustain inflation uh, anytime soon all right uh, taking that point forward then mr ko you know what about the fed how many rate hikes uh, do you see in uh, this year and also how do you see the dollar move Well, the dollar has had a very interesting uh 12 months or 13 months. True. And that in spite of what a lot of people were expecting a year and a half, the dollar would be much stronger. The dollar remained relatively weak. 
And I think here we have to put in Donald Trump into the picture, in that Donald Trump basically said U.S. trade deficit is too large, that it has to be reduced. Hmm. And when the politicians start talking about trade deficits or trade imbalances, then foreign exchange market goes through a kind of a transformation in that originally foreign exchange market was built to balance trade or settle trade. And it was in the last 30 years where capital market became more open that capital flows began to affect exchange rates. But when politicians start talking about trade imbalance, then all the traders in the foreign exchange market start paying more attention to the trade imbalance. And when, when they start paying in, uh, attention to trade imbalance, they notice that U.S. is running a huge trade deficit, which means the dollar should be weaker. And so in the current environment, I think a lot of people who otherwise would have been dollar bulls are worried because who knows, you know, next day Donald Trump might tweet and say, the dollar is too strong, let's push it down. Mm. And you don't want to be caught long dollars when that happens. And as a result, the dollar has remained relatively weak. That in turn allowed the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates because the Federal Reserve stopped raising interest rates in the middle of campaign last year because the dollar was strengthening too quickly. Mm. And the strength of the dollar was adding to protectionist pressures and all of that. But now, because Donald Trump is keeping the dollar from strengthening, that actually gives a room for Federal Reserve to raise interest rates and normalize monetary policy. So it's an odd couple. I mean, I don't think one likes the other in, in any major ways, but it just so happens that by Trump keeping the dollar from appreciating, that's allowing the Fed to normalize monetary policy. All right, uh, Mr. Koh, thanks so much, sir, for stopping by and, in fact, uh, giving us all those details. Pleasure talking to you.